you doing? Hey, I'm actually sitting here working on the how to port a chainsaw series and you know, it's intense. So I had to take a break from it and I decided why not? Let's make this little video here as well. Uh, so thought I'd give you an update or two on how things are going. So I have been selling some stuff. Uh, most of it is pretty cheap stuff. So it's not contributing a whole lot towards the fundraising effort, but you know, we're, we're moving things along. Um, I did get my couple of saws purchased that I wanted to get purchased. I think I have one. I think I have one left. Uh, I need to find an 017 for the cheap saw build. Uh, I think Bell Hopper has one for me or two. So we might have something located on that front, but I've actually been here working on a saw or two that I've never even spoke to you about in a while. Uh, I did the Homelite Super XL Auto, it's done. Um, it's all put to get back together and everything. Uh, I didn't put any videos really of me assembling it. Uh, I'm trying to get things moving a little faster pace because we, you know I got some stuff coming up that I wanna get into, but I don't wanna get into the new stuff until I get some of this old stuff done. So I haven't been recording footage so much on some of this, these projects. So that Super XL Auto that I've been porting, uh, it's actually up and running right now. Uh, I actually have a video on it, and uh, I actually don't know if this video is gonna come out before before that cutting video. It probably will. I will probably will put this video out first, but if not, you know, it, it, who knows where this is gonna be really. But I've actually got another one here I've been working on. Let me show it to you. Uh, you guys will remember this saw. Uh, those of you who've been around for a long time, uh, you might recognize it. Three seventy one XPG. This is actually my brother's saw. Um, I've got it all assembled. It's just I realized during the assembly that they shipped me the wrong seals. Uh, so one seal worked. But the seal for the clutch side here, I'm still waiting for that new seal to come in. Uh, I ordered it. I just, I'm waiting for it to come in. And, you know, I ordered these parts so long ago, there was no returning or anything. So, you know, but I have been working on this saw, uh, just kind of getting her back together and up and running. Now this, this is not a ported saw. It is modified just a teensy bit. The only modifications this saw has is a base gasket delete. So. The only difference between this and a brand new one is that it's not running a base gasket. I did no grinding on it whatsoever. I just put it together without a base gasket. So whenever we get to test this saw, we'll get to kind of see what kind of a performance difference there is on just a straightforward base gasket delete version of a 371. I don't have one that's stock to compare it to, but you know, uh, it's pretty close to a 372, right? Uh, so, you know, I think you guys will get a pretty good idea. I mean, there's a lot of footage on these types of saws out there that are ported and not ported and so forth. Well, this one just has a base gasket delete, no muffler mods, no nothing. Uh, this is built for my brother. So, you know, I just wanted to keep a pretty factory set up for him. But I got something else I wanna show you. Let me be right back. So I'm sure a bunch of you are aware that you know, I'm looking to get some of these saws pushed out so that I can bring some new projects in and that is happening. But a bunch of these projects are gonna be for myself. Uh, I'm looking to put different saws together on different classes. Uh, that way I could, you know, like a competition class. Uh, they're not gonna be the hottest things out there, I doubt it. I mean, we're not looking to race professionally or anything, but you know, I wanted to put an honest effort into some of my builds. And I had spoke before about getting a 372 clone for you know the Clone Wars saw build off, but then getting another one to build into my 80cc class saw, putting a big bore kit on it, porting it and all that stuff and running it into in, in the 80cc class. Um, I like that idea more than a 395 because it's, it's on a shorter stroke and I'm hoping that it kind of gives me an edge that I might be able to pull a few more RPMs. That's what I'm hoping. Um, but again, you know, the 395 is a, a pretty hefty saw to, uh, to compete against with the 372. So we'll have to make sure we do a good job. But things changed. Um, you know, the, uh, the saw lineup, I, I don't have them all in my hands just yet and built. 
So, you know, things will evolve and things will change, and that has changed. We are not going to be running a 372 clone big bore setup in the 80cc class. Uh, so let me show you what we are actually going to run. I just got it. So yeah, we're not going to be running a 372 clone. We are going to be running a real 372. I managed to pick this one up and you know, it was dirt cheap. It came up for sale locally. So that's what we're going with. We're going to go with a real 372 and we're going to big board and go for our 80cc class saw. Now this saw does have some issues that I'm going to have to address during the build, but it does run. Uh, it fired, it ran and everything. So we do have a running saw to start with, but I got to do, but I do have to get a big bore kit for it uh, and get that put on there, get it ported and everything. Uh, and it's, it needs a, a, probably going to need a repair too. One of the repairs I noticed is the bottom is all glued up. So I would like to replace this section of the saw. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? I would just, I'd like to find that and replace that section of it. Uh, but I'm sure we're going to run into some repairs along the way on this saw, but at least I'm starting with something that runs. Um, now the, the, the OEM 372 bottom ends are known to be heftier, uh, more durable. So, you know, I was thinking I'd probably take the 372 clone and put an OEM crankshaft and all that stuff in it. But now that I got this saw, all I gotta do is throw a top end on it and build it. You know what I mean? And I feel like this is a better option. And I got this really cheap. So, you know, I got this thing for less than what you can buy a new 372 clone for. And that's that usually doesn't happen. Um, in fact, I mean, I paid 200 bucks for it. I don't think that's bad for a 372 that runs. Uh, she's not perfect by any means, but you know, that's what we're gonna go with. Now I'm just gonna have to locate the parts and get this thing ready to get built. Now there is the potential for another change in the 70cc class. My original plan was to build this P70 into my 70cc class saw, but that might change. Um, I have a saw in the mail right now coming to me. Uh, it actually is a home light. And I'm certain a lot of you would love to see me run a home light 70cc class saw just as much as I would. So that's, I think, is what I'm going to try to do. Uh, it is a home light 410, if you're not familiar with them. They are, I believe, 69cc. Um, their piston or cylinder design, I should say, their cylinder design is extremely similar to the 130 style that I have been porting on. Super XLs, 130s, and all them. And you've seen the kind of performance levels I'm getting out of those. So what's gonna happen whenever I apply those same principles to a home light 410? Um, the saw is in the mail right now. I've never actually tore one apart. So I don't know what kind of squish number I'm gonna be able to get uh, without free porting or anything like that. That is an extremely common issue with the home light saws with getting good squish numbers. Um, we might have to actually look at possibly building a custom head for that saw. It is possible. Um, we'll probably need some help with that, but you know, we're not gonna rule that out. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to try to get that home light built as my competition saw instead of this P70. Uh, which does change my direction with the P70. I'm still porting it. We're still doing the how to port a chainsaw series, but I'm not going to try to make it as hot as I was initially going to try. I am going to move those efforts into the home light. That home light just kind of fell into my lap. It's in the mail now. I can still buy cylinders for it. You know, I think I'd be happier working on that one and running that one than the P70. The P70 is a great saw. I still do want to port it up, but not to the level that I'm going to try to do out of the home light. I feel happier doing it on a home light. You know, I'm a home light guy. Everybody knows me as a home light guy, and why not do it that way? Now, the home light 410s, you don't see a lot of them out there. You don't. So, you know, I managed to find one for really cheap. I hope it's got a good cylinder, but if it doesn't, I can always find one on eBay. They're still available. Um, there's a few new ones floating around on there. They're expensive, but we can get them. 
Now, as far as the fundraising goes, um, we're still looking to sell saws. Uh, I haven't got a taker yet on the 925. It is extremely expensive. Um, I was not surprised. Uh, I've had some inquiries. A lot of people say that, you know, that is kind of a fair price for that saw, but it is a high price regardless, and I'm not surprised that nobody's bid on it yet. But in the end, that just means that I get to keep it, right? <laughs> Now I do have other saws that I'm gonna be putting up for sale to help with the fundraising. Now I still need to make about $1,000 in order to get to the next big purchase. So, you know, I still gotta to try to sell some saws. And if I could try to sell maybe a couple of the more expensive, like the more high dollar saws that I have, um, it would happen easier. I wouldn't have to depreciate the collection as much, you know, than selling a bunch of the smaller, cheaper saws. So I'm going to lean more towards the more expensive ones, I think. Uh, I think I'm actually going to sell my XL400, to be honest. Um, I'm still going to try to sell that five, that 925. You know, if somebody still does offer to take it, then sure, I'll sell it. But I'm thinking I might sell my XL400. I just ran it. It's running great. But I think I'm still going to keep trying to sell some of the more expensive saws that I have. Now I am going to keep trying to sell saws. I'm going to focus on some of the larger ones, uh, you know, the 77, 80 cc saws. Uh, the 925s are the most popular. Um, that's, I think that's just because everybody's familiar with them, but they don't understand that there's a whole other um, selection of saws in that range. You know, there's an 800s, 850s, 875, uh, the 902s, 922s. You know, there, there's so many others that are up in that class. The 925 is the popular one, but there's still a whole lot more. You know what I mean? I just think people don't understand that there are more saws of, available in that class, you know? But anyway, I thought I'd give you this little update today and hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.